Orion the Hunter constellation is one of the easiest star patterns to find in the night sky, and one of its most defining features are the three stars that make up Orion's belt. This linear pattern is important because it can be used to point out other constellations in the sky, such as Canis Major right here, or if we aim upwards, it can point to Taurus, which is not pictured in this photograph. These three stars have a variety of names throughout the world, and in this video, we're going to explore these three stars stars in greater detail because there is definitely more here than meets the eye. Welcome to Learn the Sky. My name is Janine and I'll be your guide as we explore the night sky together one constellation at a time. Let's begin by taking a look at the celestial map of Orion. Besides this very bright star of Sirius right here, the belt stars definitely stand out to me because they're close together in the sky and they also have that straight linear shape to them. And you can use the belt stars to aim you towards Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky, and you can also use them to aim you towards Aldebaran. Aldebaran is a reddish-orange star and it represents the eye of the bull in Taurus constellation. So if we zoom in here, you can also use this middle star to aim you down towards the Great Orion Nebula. And you can also see the names here. We have Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka. And even though we see three stars here, two of these stars are in fact multi-star systems, which is really exciting. And we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. I've got multiple videos about Orion and its bright stars and celestial objects and practice with how to find it. So be sure to go check those out. Every time I look at Orion, I am always amazed and somehow comforted by its beauty. And as a scientist, I love knowing that at some point, each of these seven brightest stars will eventually become a supernova, including the belt stars. And I think it's important to point out that the belt stars have a variety of names and mythologies that go along with this three-star pattern, including the three Marys, the three kings, the Wayne beam from Chinese culture, um, Tau Toru from the Maori culture of New Zealand, and I'm certain there are many, many more names that exist out here besides the ones I listed here. So let's get a little bit practice, making sure you can see the belt stars, and here you notice that it points towards Sirius, and this whole constellation right here is Canis Major. And these belt stars are also classified as an asterism, since it's not a true constellation on its own, but rather a smaller shape within a larger constellation pattern that can be used to find other patterns. Let's take a look at another picture. Here you can see the belt stars again. You can see, use that middle star, aim you towards the Great Orion Nebula, and then here you can aim it towards Aldebaran, right here. Um, it doesn't really show up as reddish orange in this photo, and this right here is a planet, and we have the Pleiades here. But it just gives you another opportunity to use the belt stars to help you find Taurus. And I've got one more picture I want to share with you. I've been looking for one like this for a while, but this is what Orion looks like from the Southern Hemisphere. And I wanted to include this for all our Southern Hemisphere friends who watch this channel because they often comment that, hey, Orion looks upside down beside, it looks different than the way I see it. So every time I see it oriented this way in a photo, it kind of throws me off, but you can still use it to help you find Taurus, which is right here and then you can use it to find Sirius. So in the next portion of this video we're going to take a closer look at the belt stars. As you take a look at this photo, what you're looking at is a close-up view of the three belt stars and if we were to put names to them we have al Natak right here, Alnilam, which is famous for being the brightest one and largest out of the three, and Mintaka. Mintaka is the westernmost star, while Alnitak is the easternmost star. And notice the amazing celestial objects that sit right next to Alnitak. We have the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula right here. And the belt star names are derived from Arabic words. Alnitak meaning the girdle, Alnilam meaning string of pearls, and Mintaka for belt. 
belt. I've got one other close-up picture I want to share with you of the belt stars. This is such a gorgeous photo, and I'm really excited to share it with you. We have Alnitak right here, Alnilam, the brightest right here, and Mintaka. Remember, you can use Alnilam to aim you towards the Great Orion Nebula. We have the Horsehead Nebula right here and the Flame Nebula there. Remember, I've got a video about the celestial objects of Orion, so if you want to learn more, be sure to go check that video out. Now we're going to dive into more specific details about these stars. So as you're looking at this diagram, notice we have the size of the sun right here, which is equal to one solar mass and one solar radius. And then we have the main stars of the belt stars. But keep in mind that Alnitak is a triple star system and Mintaka is a multi-star system as well. So the main star, when we're looking at this diagram, we're talking about the main stars of those multi-star systems, the ones we can visually see from our perspective. So Alnitak, the main star there, has 20 is estimated to be 20 solar masses and have the radius of 19 suns. Alnilam is like twice the size of that. It is estimated to be 40 to 42 masses while having 30 solar radii. And then Mintaka is also a bit smaller than Alnitak. It's the smallest of the three um, at 20 solar masses and 16 solar radii. So I want to talk a little bit more about each of these star systems. So Alnitak, remember the easternmost star right here, is a triple star system and it's estimated to be 1260 light years away. And if we're looking at it here, this is where Alnitak is. And the triple star system, not all of them are the same. The biggest one is a blue supergiant, and that's designated as Alnitak AA. And then the next one is AB, the blue subgiant, and then we have Alnitak B, which is a blue giant. So let's get a visual on what this looks like. The blue supergiant is the one that we are primarily seeing. However, it could be combined light from all of them, to be honest. Um, AB and AA, they are both very young stars. And then actually these three stars are, it's estimated that they formed at different time periods. And the main two two stars right here, AA and AB, they have that designation because they are the main binary pair. And it's estimated that they complete one orbit around each other once every about two and a half days. This third companion right here um, is a blue giant star. This one is, um, AB is a blue subgiant, while AA is a blue supergiant. So what does that even mean? Well, mostly size and temperature. And I'm going to refer to the HR diagram here on this. So most stars spend their life in the main sequence band right here, which means that it is a stable star. It's it's pressure from fusion and the, is balanced with the force of gravity. And a star spends 90% of its life here. But as a star starts to change, its size, temperature, and color can change as well. So a subgiant is right here. It's not quite a giant star, but rather um, it's starting to evolve off the main sequence, which tells us that it's starting to run out of fuel. So supergiants are up here. This is when you had some main sequence stars in this band, in the OB band or the spectral class, they are starting to evolve and change. They're running out of fuel, so they grow in size. So I've got one other close picture here of Alnitak for you, just again showing you the beautiful Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula. So let's get into our next star. Now let's take a look at Alnilam, which is the middle star of the belt stars, and it's by far the largest and brightest of the three. It's classified as a blue supergiant star, and it's estimated to be 2,000 light years away. I found a range in terms of its size and diameter, and when we zoom in here, this right here is Alnilam. You can notice that it's brighter than the other two, and it's estimated to be 40 to 44 times 
times more massive than the sun and between 30 to 32 times the diameter of our sun, which is hard to even comprehend. It's also a variable star and it's the youngest of the bunch. And it is expected to evolve into a red supergiant and eventually explode as a supernova. Uh, another interesting fact I found is that it is losing mass um, 20 million times more rapidly than our own sun. And the reason for that is because it is so huge. Bigger stars burn through their fuel much more quickly than stars like our own sun. In the last portion of this video, we are going to go over the characteristics of Mintaka, which cl is classified as a blue giant star, or at least the main star of this entire system is. And it is classified as the smallest one of the three, and it's estimated to be 1,200 light years away. But even though it's the smallest of the three, to me it's one of the most interesting because it has this multi-star system thing going on. But at the filming of this video, it's confirmed that there are five stars, but there could be a possible sixth one. Um, I found multiple sources about this, but um, nothing that's really solid about that six star. And if we were to zoom in, this is where Mintaka is. And if we were to take a look at this system, the primary feature here is this main one right here. So Mintaka AA1 and Mintaka AA2, one is an O-type giant star, so it's bigger than the B-type main sequence star. And these two stars orbit at each other every 5.73 days and they do see some small eclipses when the star dims this star will dim when um, it passes um, behind when these two are together they're brighter but when one passes behind the other it it dims a little bit and then you have this b type subgiant star so remember a subgiant is no longer a main sequence star but starting to evolve away from it it's starting to run out of its future and starting to grow in size. The secondary pair here is HD 36485, and this star has um, Mintaka B, an A-type main sequence star. So it's, it's smaller and its color is more white as opposed to blue, like the other four systems. Um, so this is really just an interesting thing to me because as I was learning about this, I'm like, I had no idea that Orion, some of the stars in Orion's belt were multi-star systems. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And next time you look at Orion's belt, now you know there are more than just three stars there, even though we can't necessarily see them. And let me know in the comments, do the belt stars go by another name in your part of the world? Remember, as you learn the constellations, it really takes time, patience, and practice. Take a friend outside with you and marvel at the beauty of the stars. So thank you for watching again, and as always, keep looking up.